Shalom, y'all shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Call Halayim Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Harakakudash, the blessing our elders with the spirit of truth, so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwakas, keeping the faith in the work, shall keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. All right, point I'm trying to make is, no one of these shall fail. None of these prophecies in the book of the Lord, in the book of Yahweh, will fail. Right? And we are seeing it. We're seeing it unfold as we speak. One such prophecy is 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right, we're seeing great tribulation happen now. All right, scripture speaks about famines to come. All right, and... <laughs> Quite honestly, it looks like hey, we, we could possibly be there, right? The longer inflation rises, the closer we are to Second Ezra chapter 15, um, 14 through 19, all right? So, well, actually, let me bring out another one. Second Ezra 16. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 18. It says, the beginning of sorrows. And great mornings, the beginning of famine, right? And great death, the beginning of wars, right? And the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, right? This is a part of the, the payback. This is a part of the get back. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to let this video play and I'll be back. And now it's going to have a direct impact on the already skyrocketing gas prices right here at home. Our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, with more on this. Rebecca, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, and this is a significant financial weapon the U.S. can use against Russia, but it does come with a price for U.S. consumers, and you see it here at the pump. Gas prices this morning, a new fresh record high, $4.27 a gallon nationwide. In just the last week, in this escalation, you have seen gas prices spike by their biggest amount ever on record, 63 cents higher in just one week nationwide, and many places seeing even bigger jumps than that with Russia, the world's one of the world's top energy producers. We got last year about 3% of our oil from Russia. If this continues, this escalation continues, TJ, Patrick DeHaan at Gas Buddies estimate that we could be paying 25 to 50 percent more for gas in coming days and weeks. The surging prices at the pump are causing a new pain for drivers. The theft of gasoline being stolen out of your parked car. So what can you do to protect yourself and your gas tank? Joining us now is AAA Communications Manager, Doug Shoup. Hey, Doug, good to see you. Hey, good morning, Ansley. Thanks good for morning. having me on this morning. You're welcome. I know you're getting a lot of traffic on your website. I'm on there every morning to find out the national averages. Today, it's 433. You're in California. You're in L.A. It's 580 in L.A. today. It's very expensive. People can't afford to put gas in their car, and now they're stealing it? Yeah, it's unfortunately, it's a sign of the times. And, you know, thieves are looking for crimes of opportunity. Sign and of the this times. is just the latest one that they're looking at doing is actually targeting parked vehicles and stealing gasoline from the tanks of the, of the vehicles. And it's happening in various cities all across the country.
how are they doing it? Because I know there's damage involved, and I thought, how could there be damage involved when you siphon it out? But they're not doing it that way anymore, right? That's a great question. You know, that was the old way of removing or stealing gasoline from a vehicle. Thieves would siphon it out. But more newer vehicles these days, they actually have a rollover valve, which prevents right. the gasoline from coming out of the car in the event of a rollover crash, which could lead to a fire. So what they're doing now is they're actually drilling into the gas tank and letting the gas blow out. Yeah, we have pictures that our audience is seeing right now where they're just dumping the gas, drilling into your car, and then all the gas flows out into their containers. What are they doing with this gas? Are they using it for themselves or are they selling it? Well, we don't really know. And, you know, the, a lot of times this is a very underreported crime. It's just considered a theft. But, mm -hmm. you know, for the vehicle owner, this is a costly repair because you have to replace that gas tank, and that could cost at least $1,000, if not more. Wow. I know on your website you have trusted repair shops. So if this happens to you, I hope it doesn't. But if it does, you can go to the AAA website. What are some tips to prevent this? Yeah, well, make sure that you park your vehicle in your garage if you have a garage. If not, you know, try to have some surveillance cameras, security lights. Uh, also, when you're parking in public, look for like a fenced-in area or a secured parking lot. Or when parking in a parking garage, try to put your vehicle close to the entrance, near a stairwell, near an elevator, where you'll have more foot traffic and potentially get more eyes on your vehicle. These thieves, they don't want to be caught on camera. They don't want to be caught by, you know, people people walking by. So if you can park your vehicle in a place where it has more foot traffic, you'll be better off. The Biden administration fully aware of the economic impact of these sanctions here at home. Americans seeing rising gas prices of another seven cents in just the last 24 hours. We'll take a look at the numbers tonight. The national average now at $4.30 a gallon, a 60 cent hike in just one week. Tonight here, the images that say it all. American families looking for any place they can to save even a little on gas. Here's our chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, now. Tonight, the powerful images. Americans bumper to bumper. These long lines outside of Costco in Monterey Park, California, where the average price for a gallon of gas is now $5.73. Drivers waiting to save pennies on their gas. Now economists warning those record-breaking prices at the pump will push already high prices on almost everything else even higher. This has spillover effects at a time when we're adding fuel to an already well-kindled fire on inflation. Prices from food to rent already up a staggering 7.5% from last year. I'm trying to find a way to cut back, but groceries are high, gas is high. And there's nowhere, there's nowhere, to, there's nowhere to run. Tamika Calhoun, who's raising five kids in Jackson, Mississippi, tells ABC's Nightline it's forcing some tough choices. I have missed meals so that the kids could eat. I wouldn't tell them, of course, because they'll try to, you know, share their food with me. We have a big family, and the price of meat has gone up so much. It's about a hundred dollars each time I go to the grocery store. She's working overtime just to make it work, but bracing for more hikes ahead. David, the government releases the latest inflation data tomorrow morning, and economists are forecasting prices could rise as much as 8% since last February. Many of those forecasts also expect elevated prices for the rest of this year. David. All right. So, like I said, these prophecies are coming to pass, man. All right? But at the end of the day, the prophecies as it pertains to the most highest people is a two edged thing. Like you, you saw in the um the news clip and it said you got thieves out there that's si oh, they not siphoning gas, they drilling holes in the gas tank. And that's just dealing with gas. Right? So when food go out the roof, right, water go out the roof, what you think they gonna do then? Especially if you if you steadily maintaining an appearance of having money. What you think gonna happen then, man? If you don't have the covering of your how about shimmy how was shy, they coming for you, all right? They coming for you, man. All right. So let me see. This is the book of Second Ezra sixteen, but verse twenty two. It says, "For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy." All right. So it's about to get real out here, man.
It's about to get real out here. All right. The question is, what side of the prophecies do you want to be on? All right. Do you want to be on the negative or the positive? If you want to be on the negative, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine. And so many of the most highest people are on track for the negative because they refuse to believe it. They still they still thinking that this place is gonna bounce back, get back to normal, and everything gonna be sweet and copacetic. But it's not. Right? So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, verse nine. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. So all of that about to stop. The most high been giving out free ben free benefits. Hey, it's about to cease. Right? If you haven't uh, uh, stored up treasures in heaven, then you about to go bankrupt <laughs> real quick. Right? Let me see. Um, let me read that over again. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Right? Jacob's trouble, bro, it's about to get so real like this thing. Right, Yahweh by Shemiah Shirah to Zion. In fact, because that means that it's the end of this place. Right? That means that these prophecies are coming to pass, and that's the whole point. The prophecies, we want the prophecies to come to pass. Right? But once again, what part of what side of prophecy are you trying to be on? Right? Let's see the positive. This is the same book, second edges, same chapter, chapter nine, but verse seven. It says, and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. All right. From the beginning. So as if you operate in the spirit of truth. Through faith and the uh, uh, um, through faith and works with the best of your abilities, then you're gonna be all right, man. Second Ezra uh, chapter 15, where I spoke about you know what I mean people breaking into people's houses and um, people not um, listening to kings or princes that that don't apply to you, right? That's just the Most High showing you what's gonna be happening to everybody else, but that's not gonna be you, all right? Um, the most high word is true, man. And we've been telling folks so long this stuff gonna happen, man. And the apostles and the elders, which I call I call the apostles elders because they really are the elders of Yasharala. They're the leaders of Yasharala, right? They've been telling people this information for so long, right? For so long, and people just been walking by, smiling. Some people been argumentative. Some some people just just been doing all kind of wild and our stuff, right? But now they seeing it, right? Now people are starting to pay attention. But even then, like we just read in the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, they still not gonna kill man, right? They still gonna despise it. They still not gonna understand it, right? So, at the end of the day, let me see. We'll go to the book of um, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk. Let's see. Salah. One second. Go to the book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk, chapter two. And verse three. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Right? And it's speaking now. People hearing it now. Right? People hearing it. Right? But so many people was like, ah, oh, man, you, re you reading from the Bible, man. That book ain't real, man. Y'all talking about this, that, that, and the third going to happen. 
Man, that, that, word, that book ain't true. This is what the Most High said. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. It says, Blessed be Yahweh that hath given rest unto his people, Yasharallah, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Masha, his servant. Now, not one. So if it's written in the book, it will come to pass, and we're seeing it come to pass now. So, you so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, you so-called Native Americans, and all our brethren around the world, all the so-called Negro descent, get yourself together, man. Get yourself together. All right? Those of us that are trying to operate in the spirit of truth to the best of our ability, man, keep on keeping on. But if you if you hearing this, all right, if this your first time hearing anything about the truth, hey, man, stop playing. Stop playing because you're playing yourself. All right? And you're going to play yourself right on into destruction. Because the end is nigh. It is here. It is knocking at the door. Matter of fact, the door open. And we slowly walking through it. Right? So with that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Rakhazadi, his precepts in this video are edifying. Call Halayim Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Harakakudash Shalom Yahshalom.